Welcome back to Harbaugh. Remember back in January when President Obama and the First Lady appeared at so many inaugural parties? Look at that, to dance to the same song at last for different crowds, same talk, same song, different rooms. Look at that repetition. Well, that's the kind of thing it felt like on Sunday when the president appeared on five different Sunday talk shows to talk about health care. There he is, same suit, same room, five different hosts for five different networks. There he is. By the way, that's not a multiplication. That's a reality. Today's New York Times front page put it this way. For president, for the president, five programs, one message. Well, with a late night chat with David Letterman coming just hours from now, is the president's media blitz working? The Washington Post's Eugene Robinson joins me right here at this table. And Newsweek's Howard Feynman is in his hometown of Pittsburgh. He's at MSNBC Political Islands. By the way, when you look at the front page of these papers, guys, look at this. There it is. It's in all the papers, this incredible focus on the multiplicity, Gene. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just wonder. I just think everybody looks the same. The anchors all look the same. Uh, I noticed different levels of shoe shining efforts, though, but I've made an effort here. Though. Some people were more gentlemanly, I've noticed. I'm not going to say who did a better job. The president's shoes are excellent, I must say. Well, they are. And I say that as someone who has studied the success level in this city and the men who shine their shoes the most. Mm -hmm. Do the best, Absolutely. including Jack Kennedy, Absolutely. who started it. <laughs> you laugh. You take this too lightly, Howard. No, I'm uh, not. Let's I'm, get to the, let's get to the substance here. My is shoes the are president, shot. Is the president selling too much the same product? without any success. Well, if you look at it, um, you know, you could you could say maybe he's overexposed, but I think this works for him. I think what he did was dominate the news cycle and get his message out. Um, uh, and when he's getting his message out, that means his opponents are not getting their message out. So, I, I, you know, it, it's kind of odd that the president is this blackening the skies be... with airplanes. Well, Let's it's... look at Lindsey Graham here, because Lindsey Graham <laughs> is pretty funny here. I, heard, I read it. I'll see if it reads as well. Here's what he said on Sunday, making fun of the president for doing so much tube time but not enough back room time. Here he is, Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. When he came to the House, he was very combative, I thought. We're not bickering. He accused people of demagoguery who objected to his plan. He basically accused people of lying about certain aspects of his plan. And he says, if you want to bicker, forget it. If you want to sit down and talk, well, I've always wanted to sit down and talk. The president is selling something that people, quite frankly, are not buying. He's been on everything but the food channel. <laughs> well, that was a pretty good line, Howard. Everything but the food shot. I think he went on to take a little bigger shot at him. Yeah. But here is the question. You know, somebody once told a friend of mine who was a woman, her mother always said, don't make yourself too available. And uh, too available. Is that his problem right now? No, I don't think so. I, I sort of agree with Gene. It's a little bit of radar jamming here. Uh, I've, I've talked to Democrat, <laughs> Democrats on both the House and the Senate here from my perch in Pittsburgh with my well-shined shoes. Uh, and, and they and they said, look, better that he's on there than Democratic critics. The problem for the president has been they would have put all of his Democratic critics on the Sunday shows to take pot shots. That's number one. Number two, he's trying to show that he's trying because he's going to have to go to the left wing of his party, I think, or in both wings of his party and say, look, I'm trying to get something done. I'm showing, I'm showing the flag doing it. And I think he wants to put pressure on the Finance Committee to send the Senate. Because if this bill is going to get killed, it's going to get killed in the Senate Finance Committee. Did he hurt his own credibility? No. Did, did all the people hosting the oh, Sunday shows... I get it. You are so skilled. You are, this is an interesting point. Yeah. You're saying that what the president doing is putting sweat equity into this to the point that his yeah. own party members will be afraid to go after a president who's, put, who's exactly. doubled down mm -hmm. so heavily on this, put so That's many right. chips on the table, that they now know they can't break with him. That's exactly. the, been the exactly. Brinksman yeah. strip. This is Brinksman That's what I think he's doing. It is. It is. And it's going he's back. Putting, you're not willing to destroy everybody me. in on this. And so, will that and work with a Ben Nelson of... of uh, of uh, Omaha, Nebraska, who has his own politics. We'll work with a Blanche Lincoln of well, Arkansas, who has her own politics. Look, I think it ought to work with the centrist. Or Why does it work with someone Democrats. who's got their own politics to worry about? Well, it ought to work because if the Democrats are going to go down in 2010 or in 2012, who's going to lose? I mean, it's going to be, it's gonna be well, the let's ones see. who are you in argue, the swing That's the basic and... argument the president makes. If I lose, you lose. Let's take a look at the president. Here he is with his David Gregory version of Sunday television. This was yesterday. I've sent a clear signal, and I've tried to maintain uh, an approach that says, look, we can have some serious disagreements, but at the end of the day, I'm assuming that you want the best for America just like I do. You get a lot of airtime, too, though, and you're 
views are not rude. I don't think you'd <laughs> Well, say. you know, the, uh, I, I, I do occupy a, a, a pretty special seat at the moment. Uh, but, uh, but I do think that, look, I mean, let's face it. The, if, if you look at the news cycle over the last, uh, over the last week, um, you know, it, it hasn't been the, the sensible uh, people who, you know, very deliberately talk about the important issues uh, that we face as a country, that's not the folks who've gotten a lot of coverage. Okay. Let me try something by you, gentlemen, because we talk a lot, and I, I don't want to get off channel with the American people. Howard and Gene, here's my question. If you go to the average person in this country who's got their own problems, whatever, they're middle class, working class, whatever, they're worried about the economy. They're worried about mm -hmm. the kids not being able to get jobs. They're worried about holding on to their own jobs. They're worried about their lack of savings. They remember having more. They don't have as much now. They worry about their home values going down. These are the real concerns of real people. Isn't there a disconnect between those real concerns of real people, the economy, mm -hmm. and the president going on television and selling this health care thing that isn't what they're thinking about? Well, uh, Isn't he off channel? Here's what I think the disconnect is. I think the White House still hasn't driven home the message it's trying to get over, which is that you may not think your health care is in danger. You may think it's fine, but your premiums have, are, are going up much faster than your salary. They've, gone, they've doubled in the last few years. Yeah, people they're going to double a larger again. Question. And, and your health care is in jeopardy. Now, that's the message they're trying to get across. Okay, Howard, I'm going to try with you. Is the president on the wrong channel here? Shouldn't he be focusing on the the economy yeah. and the economy, the economy, stupid, and saying, by the way, one of the ways we can help the economy is to get this health care bill through. In other words, get on the channel the people are on, which is worrying about the economy, not his pet project. Which right. a lot of people may say, he wants the trophy, I just want to hold on to my job. Right. I'm wondering whether he's on off, but you may agree with Gene. No, Is no, I, base I, I agree. I, I, agree. I, th I think that's a danger, Chris, and viewed from the vantage point of Pittsburgh, definitely so. I mean, he's popular here, but people aren't quite getting the connection between the gamesmanship going on inside the Beltway and his constant references to himself. You know, it's very interesting about Obama. He uses the word I a lot which was good because it helped him get elected because, as he said, you know, we were the change we've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. But if he makes it sound too much like a political victory as opposed to the victory, a victory for average working people, then he's definitely in trouble. And if they get to thinking, along with Jay Rockefeller, who's from right next door in West Virginia, that this bill is going to hurt uh, health insurance plans for steel workers and coal miners, etc., then the president's got himself some trouble, and he better watch out for it. Whether you call it a tax or whatever you're going to call it, people are going to be aware of that. They're sort of in a, it's an odd thing. They want change, but they're also in a conservative mood here because they've lost yeah. so much else. They, they're worried about losing their health care short term, not long term. Okay. I, I think maybe we've come, we've hit on another uh, new axiom, which is uh, not just shine your shoes, but use the word you yeah. rather than right. the word I or right. we exactly. and say, yeah, this is about you. This is not about exactly. Me. Well, that could exactly. be part of it. I just wonder whether he's lost that uh, magic uh, synchronicity he had with the people about a year ago, which is knowing we didn't like the war in Iraq, knowing we didn't like Bush and Cheney, knowing a lot of things the country 50 plus 60 percent even agreed with him on, and now trying to talk about something that's his focus. It's like precious bodily fluids in the movie, uh, you well, know. Uh, Chris, the problem. Well, Chris, the, movie, yeah, I mean, Chris, the problem. When he like, does this sort of thing, Chris, his numbers go up. The one thing he's yeah. really out of step with public opinion on is Afghanistan, yeah, and thinking, that's a big I just want to. You don't think you do? You both think he, you think he's still talking to the American people on their yeah. level? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think he may have lost the channel for a while. I